Now, what I mean by professional hunters is just like there's professional trappers to get rid of nuisance animals, there's also that for deer and other animals. These guys year-round will be able to take animals and they move them from golf courses, inside cities. And <clears throat> if you study what they do, because again, it's their job to put it down quick, clean, and they don't want to trap them. They want to drop them on the spot. And the three places they aim for most is the head. If they can get a good head shot, they're going to go for the neck to sever that neck, or they're going to go for the high shoulder. And those three kills are instantaneous. You're going to drop it on the spot. If you're doing the brain, you're shutting down that system. If you shoot the spine, you're cutting the brain stem and it's going to shut it down. And by doing that high shoulder shot, it's also going to snap that spine and cut that cord cutting all signals to the brain. And it's going to drop instantly. So <clears throat> there's guys that'll say that didn't really happen. Oh, they edited it. They didn't say how many times they missed blah, blah, blah. That's a load of crap because they're not, they're seeing the evidence. They're seeing that animal drop instantly on the spot and they don't like it. And so they're going to make up stuff in order to make it look bad. But it's not edited. That is a real shot. It's legitimate. It's used all the time and it's taught in long range. And so it's one of those things that you hit it there. It's going to drop on the spot. So again, right bullet for the right shot on that animal anatomy. So then you want to pick. So again, if I'm close range, I'm going to go behind the shoulder. One of my favorites is top of the heart, bottom of the lungs. And what it's going to do is it's going to enter here and it's going to both it's going to puncture or uh, puncture the heart and it's going to puncture both lungs. And then that temporary wound cavity is going to rupture everything in there, especially at close range. I'm not going to do a shoulder shot up close. I'm just not. A head shot will work perfectly. And again, you can shoot it in the neck. I prefer not to. I have shot animals in the neck, but it's such a small target. And depending on fur and everything, it's harder to pick out. Um, so severing the brain stem. Uh, if it's facing away, you can hit it in the back of the head where that brain stem meets. And again, it's about understanding each animal's anatomy. So head shots, high shoulder shots, behind the shoulder. Um, it works very well, but again, you need to pick what bullet is going to work for you. Those old school thick bullets will work on animals like this, but on this, it's not going to be ideal. Again, if you're not using the right bullet and you don't see performance, a lot of guys blame the equipment. Oh, the bullet didn't work. The caliber didn't work, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's a low. They didn't understand what happened or what they were looking at. And so they're blaming the equipment when it's their lack of knowledge that's giving them this. Now, this is a bigger diagram. And what I want to show you is an enlarged version of that temporary wound cavity and talk temporarily about that. <clears throat> so you have your hide here, you have your meat and bone and everything. And then this is that internal cavity. And so this bullet goes in, whether it's hydraulic shock or whether it's hydrostatic shock, <clears throat> and what it's going to do is it's going to enter, it's going to meet that resistance at the rib cage, and it's going to start opening up. And as it opens, it's going to dump that energy into the body, and it's causing this temporary wound cavity. And again, hydraulic shock is over 2,200 feet per second, and those close, close range shots, so it's going to cause massive trauma. And then you have that hydrostatic shock under 2,200 feet per second, and that's <clears throat> what is also here. And the only difference is going to be how much damage is caused. And that's something that with the old school guys of the original style hunting bullets required a minimum of 2,200 feet per second to expand. And so a lot of those old timers still live by that rule when in reality it's not necessary. And so what we're doing here is those bullets, again, depending on the animal, could not work. Um, but these newer bullets can expand at much, much lower velocities. Um, and so again, you're going to enter, you're going to have this temporary wound cavity, whether it's hydraulic or hydrostatic, and you're going to have this permanent wound cavity. And it goes back to that ballist the ballistics gel. Of you're going to see it rapidly expand and come back, and then you have this permanent wound cavity. And this permanent wound cavity is going to stay open. That's what's going to bleed. And again, you want both. Okay, this is a little better. You can see my head. But again, a lot of people blame the bullet for their lack of understanding. Match bullets are very, very effective. And again, it's about knowing how to use them. These bullets will expand and depending on the bullet is going to depend on it. Now, a lot of test results have showed this both on animals and in testing that this ELD match bullets, we've had reliable expansion down to 12 to 1300 feet per second. And so anything above that, and again, depending on what gun, what caliber you're pushing it at, the velocity is going to extend that range out. And so, it's really going to depend on the situation and it's going to depend on 
your caliber and your abilities. But again, close range with a match bolt like this ELD, I'm going right behind the ribs. I'm going right for that shot. It doesn't lose a lot of meat. And if it's long range, again, this bullet is going to perform really well. That's where they excel is that lower velocity entering the body and causing that temporary wound cavity to open. The match bullets work great at those lower velocities. <clears throat> so again, match bullets are really just more consistent, which makes them a better hunting bullet in my opinion. Because again, the consistency of this for reliability of external ballistics of it flying through the air repeatedly for accuracy purposes is also going to help reliable expansion. I've seen some of these hunting bullets that they're thicker jacketed and they're not, the attention to detail isn't quite there as much. And I've seen different results over the years. Um, the match bullets, I've seen consistent results across the board. Now, I'm still new to this whole editing thing. I do have a bunch of pictures. I'm going to try to enter in this video if I can't. At least, again, these videos are for the members mainly. So if you're a member, go to that topic section and simply take a look. It'll blow your mind what these bullets can do. And something to leave on is just look at it. Take it, look at those pictures, and look at what you really need to learn. Study that animal. Knowing animal anatomy is crucial for shot placements. And a very good description of that, or a very good example of that, is hogs versus deer or a deer animal. Now a hog, the leg is actually much, er, the leg, the vitals are actually farther forward. And so that's something you gotta account for um, versus a deer. With a deer you have the leg and then you have the vitals back here, whereas the vitals on a hog are right here. And so they're much more forward and so you have to change tactics a little bit as far as that to make sure if you're at close range, you're not gonna hit that bone of the shoulder and not drop that animal. And so you can do headshots, you can do it quartering that can get it where it needs to. There's different things that you can do, but again, it really comes down to shot placement, picking that correct bullet for the animal anatomy and the terminal ballistics you require. And that's really what it is. Again, there's a lot of mis misinformation and 95% of these guys that I deal with, the one common denominator is they've never shot past 200. And there are a few that do, and some of them haven't even tried long shots with bad results. And so then they're the best hunter in the world. So if they can't do it, what is it? It's unethical. And I've talked about that before in the ethics bomb of just because you can't do something doesn't make it unethical. Different people have different skill levels. And again, long range, we study more than anybody. A year round, we are discussing every single day. I mean, this group has insane volume for such a small group. The last time I looked, the last 60 days was 552 posts with just over 800 members, 5,265 comments, and over 10,000 reactions. And again, that's not counting what's happening outside the group. But again, we for years have documented and tested all this stuff and have based it off of the bullet. Again, the bullet never lies. The bullet never lies. You'll never be wrong as long as you go with what the bullet actually does. And again, a lot of those guys going out there and saying that it won't work or it's not designed for that, it's not sold for that market or whatever, they really don't understand. A lot of them don't want to understand. And what I mean by that is I will show them pictures, I'll go through facts, I'll do all this kind of stuff, and only a couple outcomes happen. Most never change their mind because, again, they have that mindset. They don't like it. And so either after I've proved them wrong definitively, they're going to say, you know, you're wrong, blah, blah. And they're going to lose their mind and just argue and name call and everything. And some will simply say, I don't care what you have to say. I don't believe it. I don't like it. And it really comes down to that. They don't like it. So nothing we're going to say is really going to change their mind. It doesn't matter how much proof we provide. It, you know, I got an argument with one guy. And it got to the point where the admin got involved of, I told him, because he's like, you guys simply do that because you can't hunt up close. And when I pointed out the fact that most of us long range hunters are archery hunters, he said, prove it. So 50 pictures later of animals that I've killed, the admin got on there and said, hey, dude, okay, you won. You know, I think you did a little overkill on him on that. And this guy still went at it. And they just, what a lot of these guys do is they'll just change tacks and try to attack you from a different way. 
So again, base it off facts, not theories of some guy on the internet. Um, you know, if you're in the group and you're new to it and you're curious about it, go take a look at that topic section. Again, the evidence is there. We have not only people that you can talk to about it in all backgrounds, but you have the pictures there, pictures of mushroom bullets, recoveries, everything. And as I continue with this, I'm going to start filming my hunts and I'm going to film that part too. I'm going to film showing the terminal ballistics of what it does, the bullet, etc., and give you real life footage of what I'm talking about as we continue this. So again, don't be afraid to use match bullets. Marketing is marketing. It's kind of like politics in a lot of ways. Just because they say something doesn't make it fact. And so, in again, most of the guys I know that are in certain areas like that, they all use match bullets for hunting. And they're the experts. So it's one of those things that don't be afraid to use it. The ELD match, especially from Hornady, is incredible. It's a lot of people's favorite bullet, and there's a reason. It performs extremely well. And... So knowing what it's going to do, your impact velocity, and again, stay away from the whole, oh, it has to be 20 to 200 feet per second. That's old school thinking of the old school style bullets, which again, required that. But these newer style bullets are designed. And here's the thing. Talk to an ammo manufacturer, and you can find this out, and look at pistols. The 45 ACP can expand under 1,000 feet per second and cause hydrostatic shock. The bullet design, they can design a bullet to really expand and dump energy at pretty much any velocity. It's all about design. And these bullets with the thicker jackets, more consistent, and again, with this ballistic tip, which is going to help when it hits of forcing that expansion, they work really well. They work consistent, and again, they have that low impact velocity, and it's gonna go through. And there, again, there's a lot of misconceptions on as far as power saying oh well you know it doesn't have the energy at this distance it really does and energy gets blown out of proportion too because again if you're using the wrong bullet like i said if you use that water buffalo round for that moose that it's going to work perfectly inside the water buffalo but that moose it's not and or a deer i know a guy that shot a deer with a 375 h and h with a water buffalo round and it blew right through it and penciled through and again he has an amazing amount of energy but the bullet's not dumping that energy. So he, re in reality, he doesn't have energy. He has the potential for energy, but that potential is lost because he's using the wrong bullet and he's not getting the required terminal ballistics. So again, something like an ELD match is going to dump all or most of that energy into that animal and it's gonna cause an incapacity and kill. So again, test stuff out and pick what works best for you. Again, if you want to use a certain bullet, you know, there's guys like Aaron who are just an incredible expert in that area. And again, I refer a lot of you guys to Aaron because of his knowledge base and real world experience is go and study that. Talk to him. He has a lot of posts. He has a lot of stuff. And look through those pictures of if you want to use a certain bullet and even though it's not one that we use generally for long range, but if you're in shorter range shots and you want to use that old school bullet, he can help guide you through what your requirements are and how to best utilize that for distances, velocities, shot placement, everything. So you can use even those thicker ones if you choose to use it correctly. And so <clears throat> if you need help, ask. We have an insane amount of knowledge in the group, a insane amount of people that use different bullets and we can show you and prove to you what those bullets do and help you put in, or make an educated decision and help you be more effective in the field. Um, again, this has run a little longer. I'm actually doing this and this is the second part of this because of that. Um, but again, match bullets do expand. They do kill. They're not for just punching paper or ringing steel. They work. And Again, I'll try to include pictures in here. If I can't get it to work, then again, this is for the group. So go in that topic section and you can see all of those. So test, test, test. The bullet tells the truth. There's a lot of people on the internet saying stuff and theories, but if they can't prove it in the field, guess what? They're wrong. So go by the proof, the evidence. And again, I'm going to start filming my hunt so we can show you this now that I'm doing YouTube. And... Be smart. Learn, learn, learn. 
The world record grizzly bear was killed by a small Indian woman with a 22 that was attacking her and her friend rabbit hunting. Think about that. And she attributed that to animal anatomy from doing taxidermy with her dad in knowledge of that bullet and where to put it. And so she put it inside the brain at a weak point. And so she was able to put down a charging grizzly that ended up being a world record with a 22 long rifle. So again, you don't need a big caliber. And a lot of people use small calibers and they don't use the right bullet. And then they blame it and they go to a bigger caliber to compensate for that, or they make a bad shot. You really don't need a big caliber. In Russia and parts of Canada around the world, a 6.5 is the most commonly used moose cartridge. My brother dropped his moose and his elk, both with no track jobs, with a 260 Remington, which is a 6.5. Again, it's all about knowledge, bullet selection, and shot placement. So study up. I'll, myself and all the other guys in the group will help you, especially you new guys, and we'll get you on the right path and show you what works, what doesn't work, and how to adapt and be a better hunter and a more educated one. So I hope this has helped everybody. If you have any questions in the group, go ahead and ask and I'll do my best to answer. If there's somebody better like Aaron, as far as a particular subject inside there, I'm again, I know a lot of it, but he is way beyond my knowledge base as far as especially reloading bullet selection, stuff like that. And he's tested a way broader selection. So again, there's a ton, a ton of knowledge base inside this group of very qualified guys. So if I can't answer your question, I'll pass you on to somebody who does and gives you the correct information. So again, I hope this helps everybody out and happy hunting.